So I've lived on my own for the entirety of my 20s and I'm 29 now. <laughs> I've had roommates, I've had cockroaches. I feel like over the last 10 years of living on my own, I have experienced everything that I can experience, I think. <laughs> and I know that when I first moved out, I was so excited to finally experience freedom and independence and I have learned so much about all of that. So today we're gonna talk about it and everything that I've learned about living on my own in my 20s. Second of all, moving out is one of the the things we do in life that you know is kind of inevitable. Like you're gonna move out at some point, but it can be so overwhelming and scary, and also really exciting. I was somebody that was really excited to get out on my own. I just really wanted my space and some independence and feel like I was grown. And I actually moved out for the first time at 18. I moved out of my parents' house and I went to the dorm. And throughout the years, I've been asked a million and one times how I'm so comfortable living alone, why I love it so much, how to get excited over the concept of living on your own. And I thought for today, it'd be the perfect video for my end of my 20 series. Cheers. Delicious. Off. Let's do a little blast from the past and go over all my previous living experiences. I have had, I think, nine apartments throughout the last 10, 11 years of living on my own. Kind of crazy to think about, and I think that I've truly experienced everything that I could experience in that time. My first experiences were with roommates, so I got to be on my own, but I also had, you know, company, and I also learned how to share a space with somebody, what goes into having roommates and sharing a space. I specifically remember, though, when I got my own small little studio, and it was all mine. I had no roommates. Going up to my apartment for the first time, but by myself. OMG. This is my place. This is mine. Oh my god. Okay. This is crazy. I'm in here alone. No one else is here. I'm an adult. <laughs> it was my very first time ever truly being alone on my own. Everything was mine. Everything was up to me. And it was truly really the most exciting and free that I have felt ever at that point in my life and I was like 19, 20. And I feel like it's a rite of passage to have a place with cockroaches at the beginning of your, you know, living alone experience. And I have that. I have to show you, I have to show you. I'm not gonna look at it. I'm gonna just look at the floor. Can you see it? I don't know if you could see it, but it was there. And I moved out. <laughs> and then I remember getting my first apartment with a bedroom, like a door to my room. And I felt so adult, so grown up. The little luxuries, like having a door to your bedroom. I'm just so happy this is, everything I could have ever wanted. And I have a bedroom with a door. A bedroom with a door. You just really appreciate them. I'll never forget what it felt like. Every little step to getting to where I am right now in my life with this house has been one that I've just had so much gratitude for. Every single place brought me new things, new experiences, new levels of confidence and independence. When I moved out of my one bedroom and I got my two bedroom and I had an office space for the first time and I saw what that was like and just more space, more responsibility, higher expenses. And then obviously I ended up buying a place and then I got this place and I did a big move. But with all these moves, I have learned a lot and I'm gonna share those things with you guys today as well as some essentials when you move up for the first time ever. There's a lot of things that you kind of forget Forget that you need when you're living with your parents or whatever. Just lots of really little things that you kind of forget you need to buy. But I will say the first shopping trip, getting new stuff for your first place ever is the most exciting thing because it's all yours. It's all yours. You get to do anything you want with it. It's exhilarating. It's exhilarating mixed with a little bit of overwhelming dread because the list actually gets so long. You don't realize the things that you need until you start actually having to go through the list and fill up a place. Obviously over time, you build up your space, you build up the things that you have, but on day one, you gotta start with the essentials. And there are a decent amount of things on that list. You're starting in the kitchen, which was always my favorite place to buy for, which is so random and it 
really makes me feel like an adult. You're gonna need cups and plates and bowls and utensils, a garbage can. Those are weirdly expensive. If you plan on doing some cooking, which I definitely did not do when I first lived on my own, I was not cooking at all. I don't even think I owned pots and pans. But if you want to, pots and pans, usually pretty good. Tupperware is a good one if you like having leftovers in the fridge. Something I hadn't really thought about when I moved out was all the cleaning supplies. <laughs> Dish soap, hand soap, dishwasher pods, garbage bags, a Swiffer, a vacuum. As for furniture pieces, I started off with just a bed, my two nightstands that were from Ikea, 50 bucks, and then my desk, and that was pretty much it. That's when I lived with roommates, and then as I moved out on my own, I had to buy a couch, a lamp, I think I got a little table too. I feel like for your first place, just go the cheap route. Like, get whatever's cheapest and easy it doesn't have to be the most aesthetic. I know it's easy to compare your place to what people's look like on social media, but you really can't compare to somebody's, you know, 10 years of living alone to your first year. I think just get what's most practical. Personally, I went for function over anything else. I only started finding my own interior style as I got older and like, you know, through the apartments that I had. I definitely didn't start off in that way at all. It definitely takes time to make a place a real home, something that really fits you and your style and your needs. And I don't think that anyone should put pressure on themselves to do that in the first run of getting things for your place. Just go for the basics, the essentials, things that you actually need. Living on your own obviously has a ton of expenses. It's much more expensive to live on your own than have roommates or live with your family. And things can add up really fast. The monthly essentials, you know, like it just go with practicality. Don't put so much pressure on making your place look like you imagine it to look off of your Pinterest inspo board, you'll get there. But don't worry about it right off the bat. Throughout these last 10 years of living on my own, I've gotten so many questions about safety as a woman living by herself, how to not feel lonely, how to just feel comfortable, make a space your own. So many things about living on your own and I feel like I have 10 really solid pieces of advice that I can share with you guys, which we're gonna do from the comfort of my couch because it's a rainy day. And because I live alone, I can choose what I do. And that is a beautiful thing. I could stay in my pajamas all day, but I did decide to get ready today because we're talking to you, so. Here are 10 things that I have learned about living alone from living alone for 10 years. Starting off with the things that I love about it, which I love talking about because I am so passionate about living alone. I've had friends that have had roommates forever debate moving into their own place on their own, no roommates, and I will rave about it to anyone that will listen to me. I think it is such a valuable time in your life to get to live on your own. Obviously it's a privilege. Not everyone can actually make that work, but if it's an option for you, I think it is so valuable to experience what it's like at least once in your life. To have the complete freedom of living on your own is so unique and special. That is the first thing that I love about living alone, the freedom. It sounds really Really obvious super simple because that is what you're doing you're living alone you have all the freedom in the world but until you actually do it like you'll never really understand how it feels to be a hundred percent on your own taking care of yourself making all the decisions you get to pick everything you want to eat which sometimes is overwhelming because you don't always want to have to decide what you're eating but you get the privilege of getting the option to choose you can have breakfast for dinner if you want you can have dessert for dinner if you feel like it if you work from home or just on a weekend you can spend the entire day in your PJs you can spend two days in your PJs no one's gonna say no because because you are the adult. You are the responsible one. You get to choose. And there are no rules. Once you live on your own, you realize that you're just kind of making it up as you go. Your parents are still making it up. Like, there are no rules in life. You know, be a good person, add to society in some regard, I don't know. But like, your time is your time. You get to choose. Again, if you work from home, you can work from bed all day if you feel like it. If you don't feel like being an adult and being responsible, you don't have to be. Obviously, this goes for if you live on your own, you don't have kids or animals to be responsible for aka my situation. You get to pick 100% of how you spend your time, what you do, what you consume, you get to make the rules. It is the best feeling ever. The second thing I've loved about living alone is how much you get to learn about yourself and experience through all the different environments that you're in, like whether you're with roommates and then you move to being you know, on your own like I have. You learn a lot. So my very first experience living on my own was with roommates and I learned how important it is to communicate your expectations, your needs, but at the same time, when you first go into that situation, you don't really know what your needs are. A lot of life, as I've known it so far, is learning through experience. So living with my friend Maddie, when we were roomed together at university, we are both messy people and we kept everything a mess. It was all a mess to the point where there was one day, I'll never forget it, there was a bowl of cereal that I think she had that was left out for maybe a week, I don't know how long. We were both messy. We were also 18, we were free for the first time ever. We didn't care about cleaning. One day I kind of had enough and I started cleaning the kitchen and it was hardened the, the cereal was hardened. And that's when I learned, you know what, maybe 
you know, you gotta be considerate of the space. And then you can communicate your needs and you just kind of learn as you go and figure it out. I think what I learned in my short stint of having roommates is that it's very, very important to be considerate of the shared space. You know, like if you're gonna cook, clean up your mess immediately. That should not be on your roommates to come home and like see your mess and have to deal with it or anything like that. Like that's on you. You have to be responsible of your stuff and make sure that you're not ruining the shared space. Do whatever you want with your own room. Like I sure as heck did. I did not clean my room. Like it was always messy, but that's my space. It's not affecting anybody else. So when I moved into my own place, I had all the space to be as messy as I felt like it. And through time, you know, you kind of get sick of your own shit. And that's when you start to learn how to clean and take care of yourself a little bit more. But you know, right off the bat, you're kind of still a kid and your shit's everywhere. <laughs> your mom's no longer there telling you to clean your room and do this and do that. Like eventually you have to be your own boss and like be an adult and take care of your shit. So you really do learn a lot. And then you also grow a lot. I think this goes without saying, but the first time in your life that you're truly alone, you have to learn how to take care of yourself without anybody telling you what to do and how to do it and when to do it. This truly comes with time, I think. Like, I don't think that you should go in thinking you're gonna be like the perfect adult the first time that you step foot into your own place. I guess it depends on what stage of life you're in. I was 19 years old when I moved into my very first studio, my very first place without roommates, and I did not know how to take care of myself. I did whatever I needed to survive. I went to the grocery store, I went to the hot bar, and then I got the cheesy spinach and cheesy broccoli. And that's what I lived off of. I lived off of purely frozen food. I still do. But you know, we mix in the greens and like we're a little bit more balanced now, but I sure as heck didn't know how to cook a single thing. Like not a single thing. I couldn't cook rice. And it's really cool getting to look back one day and see how far you've come because there is so much growth in the time between, you know, moving out. You really, it's the first time in your life that you actually get to figure out who you are as a person on your own and like form your own opinions, figure out how you want to live your life life. And I think it's important to lean into not knowing what the fuck you're doing. Nobody does. Nobody knows what they're doing at all times. And if people say they do, I think they're lying. Just because somebody is a certain age or seems like they're at a certain point in their life does not mean they have it all figured out. I think you keep growing forever. Every stage of life, every experience, you're gonna grow into a different version of yourself. You're gonna experience more things. It's amazing, I love it. And the fourth thing that I have loved about living alone in my 20s, and maybe my top favorite thing, is the solo time. And like the real solo time. Sounds really obvious, you're alone. You're alone all the time. But the things that you get to do with yourself that can bring so much joy, for example, something that I love is dancing around the kitchen while I cook dinner or breakfast or lunch, blasting my music, singing the words as loud as I can because no one's gonna tell me to shut up. Putting the Taylor Swift album on for three days straight because once again, no one's gonna tell me to turn it off. The times that I've been single in my 20s will always be some of my most cherished times. It is the most free I'll ever be in my entire life and I don't take a single day of it for granted. Life changes really fast. You have no idea when somebody's going to enter your life and change the entire the entire way you live it. And you don't really know when your solo time is gonna end and you just really gotta soak it up while you have it. That's not to say that time with anybody else is worse, but you never know when you're gonna say goodbye to that solo time and never get it back. I think you grow the most when you're on your own solo with your thoughts. You can journal, you can do all the things. I have loved every second of it. It is. I love it, I love it. As for safety, I have two main points because obviously as a woman living alone, it can be scary. One thing that I've always loved through all of my apartments is having automatic lights. Off the bat, this can seem just like a very simple little luxury item, but you can get the bulbs really cheap on Amazon. And as a woman living alone, it has made me feel infinitely more comfortable coming home if I'm late at night or whenever, or if it's just like a little bit later in the evening. Having a light on so I don't walk into total darkness makes such a difference. I feel so much safer. I feel like I can see my surroundings. I don't have to worry about somebody maybe standing in a dark corner. It just feels so much safer. On top of that, I personally like getting to go into bed and then turning my lights off from my phone because they're usually synced up to an app versus turning off my lights and then like running up to bed. Even just starting off with one lamp, one bulb, 20 bucks, I swear makes such a difference. As for other security measures, I I know that there's like some stick you can get if you live in an apartment that goes under your door, like under your door handle and no one can come in. I think it's a bit of a fire hazard, but if it makes you feel safer, you know, I think do what you need to do. Personally, I have an alarm system that is synced up to all my doors and my windows. So at night I turn on my alarm and it just makes me feel a lot safer. Now, the biggest thing that I'm asked about is feeling lonely. Obviously, if you don't have roommates, it's easy to feel lonely. You're kind of by yourself a lot, especially if you work from home, you're, you're alone all the time. My number one tip that I have said forever 
ever is to fill the silence. Like truly, if you put on some music or if you're not a music kind of person, you can put on an audiobook or have a TV on in the background. Any kind of sound to drown out the quiet makes you feel so much less alone so fast. I personally am a music girl. When I'm not filming, I always have music on, always. And because of that, I'm usually singing and like I just have a good vibe with myself. I have a lot of fun. It is, it's a huge game changer. I could not recommend more. And that's a nice thing about living alone is you get to pick the music. You can make your own little playlist. I actually have a morning playlist that I put on every morning when I get out of bed. Like I will put it on, same song every morning and like it just gets into a routine. It's really fun, like I love it. <laughs> now I've always been more of a homebody. Like I love being home. It's been very natural for me to, you know, enjoy my alone time here. But with that being said, it's also very important to have just plans on the calendar. Like make plans with your friends in advance, have them locked in so you have something to look forward to throughout the week. Otherwise it can sometimes feel like every day can look the same. It can be Groundhog Day. You're just kind of by yourself doing the same thing, doing the same routine, but that's life. Most people experience that more so if you live alone because there's no one to change up the routine and the cycles. So having things on the cow makes a big difference. Another one that is so wonderful these days is FaceTime. FaceTime is great. I call my parents all the time on FaceTime if I ever feel like I just need a, a five minute chit chat. I have friends that live alone that just randomly call throughout the day and then we'll chat for five, 10 minutes and then go back to our day. Sometimes it's all you need is like five minutes of social interaction and then you're good. And the beauty of living alone is that once you've had that fill, you go back to chilling. Like you go back to being by yourself, quiet time. Obviously, if you're more extroverted, you might need a little bit more time <laughs> to feel like you've been filled in that cup. But I, I'm like an extroverted introvert. So I need like, 10 minutes of talk time and then I'm good to be silent for hours. <laughs> but it is nice that FaceTime is available and you can just pop in, call whoever, whatever you want. It's a good opportunity to call your grandparents. You just gotta be mindful of all the things that you can do to help with the loneliness when you feel it. And the last thing that I think fills all the cups is just making your space your perfect place. Obviously it takes time to really get there. It's not gonna happen overnight. You can find little things to make it feel more you, more homey. One day your space is going to feel like your safe space and you're gonna come home and it's gonna be like just a deep breath. It doesn't matter how long I'm out of my house for, whenever I get to come home and be here and like enjoy a little night to myself, I love it so much. I love it so much, I feel like my home just makes me so happy. And I think once you just really settle into that, it is the best. Living on your own is a wonderful thing. I love it so much. I will rave about it all day long. If you live alone and have any tips for anyone that's like starting this journey, definitely leave a comment down below so we can all read and feel more comfortable in our spaces and maybe get more tips that we hadn't thought of, more ways to make life on your own really fun. Honestly, if it's your first time ever living alone, you're gonna have the best experience ever. If this is the start of your journey, trust me, it is the best. I'm about to do exactly what I said I love about living alone, making myself some pasta, I'm gonna listen to Taylor Swift, I'm probably gonna dance around and sing, and then I'm gonna go read my book and get into bed whenever I feel like it, whether it's eight, that's too soon, probably nine, read my book, maybe watch a show, whatever show I want, whatever book I feel like, options galore. It's never ending, it's a wonderful thing. Enjoy it, cherish it. Again, if you have any thoughts on living alone and your experience, share them in the comments. But that's gonna be it for today. I'm gonna enjoy my night, soak up the solo time, and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye.